As an artist and as an art teacher, one of the things I often hear is, I'm not creative. And the problem with that way of thinking is that it sounds permanent. Like there's creative people and there's non-creative people and there's nothing in between. But I believe everyone could be creative and you could actually strengthen your creativity over time. It's like a skill that you could build. Now, I understand that thinking because I felt the same way when I was young. I remember loving album covers because that was the art that was most accessible to me when I was a kid. And I remember thinking like, how do they come up with these ideas? They're amazing. And I would think about it and I'd look at these and I'd feel like it was such a big gap from where I was looking at this and where the creative person who made it was. You know, it was like magic happening behind a curtain. I didn't understand how to get there. It's something that I wanted to do, but I had no understanding of how to do it. But then something happened that changed my mind. I had a teacher pull me aside for a, a special art project and we only had one hour to do it. And it was to build Abraham Lincoln's hat for a play that we were putting on. Now, the fact that we only had one hour was important and we had a couple of materials, some cardboard, some paper, some glue, stuff you might find in a school, uh, and a really limited amount of time. And we just had to get to work problem solving. We didn't have time to worry about being creative. We just had to problem solve fast. And it really taught me a big lesson. We did make the hat. And as an artist, I think back on that hat often and how I might better make that hat. But I, I learned that limitations can actually be your best friend when you want to be creative, right? It sounds strange, but it's really, really true. In art, we have ideas like uh, blind contour drawing, where you actually don't look at what you're drawing. And oftentimes that frees people up to be more experimental and, and be looser and actually to look more at what they're drawing, which is the most important part of that skill. And, you know, I'll give an assignment like photographing a self-portrait without using your face, right? Because you have to actually think more about how to find a creative solution to that problem or creating a sculpture without using any art materials at all, right? And then in writing, there's things like haikus, which is a Japanese three-line poem of five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables. So that restriction makes it a little bit easier to be creative and find an interesting solution, right? But the best example I could give you is actually right here. I'm in my kitchen giving this talk when I was supposed to be on stage talking to a full audience. And it's because of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, just like everyone else, it's been very strange and there's been a lot of changes, but it's actually a big creative opportunity, right? In, in addition to the fear and the anxiety and sometimes the heartbreak uh, of, of what this pandemic has brought, it also has brought a great deal of positive change in some weird ways, right? As an educator, I've had to learn how to connect virtually with my students, and that's been a big change. But basically, every teacher suddenly had to be a technology teacher, and we've had to find ways to be more creative in our teaching and in our ways to connect with students, right? And the fact that I'm here uh, and, and doing this is another example of that. But one of the, the favorite activities that we've done so far is called the Getty Museum Challenge. And what we did was the Getty Museum put out an idea where you recreate a work of art at home and just use three things from around the house. So I recreated a favorite Van Gogh painting from my Getty Challenge and I found an old jacket and a hat and then I took a picture and then I used my iPad to actually draw over that picture and I specifically chose a program I didn't know very well because I know that limitation helps me be more creative. And it worked. I learned a lot about the painter and I learned a lot about the program. And I was really happy with the results, so I shared it on social media, as did many other people. And the results were pretty amazing. You know, the, the work was really creative. So I had my students do the project and I invited them to share it. And I mean, they were very um, shy about sharing their work. And that's because one of the big issues with being creative and taking that risk is judgment. Right? None of us want to be judged, especially when we're putting ourselves out there and trying something new. So um, you really need to understand that judgment is the first thing that's going to shut down creative thinking almost every time. If you don't feel comfortable, it's really hard to be creative. That's really important to understand, regardless of what you do. So, you know, understanding that a lot of that judgment actually comes from within us is really important as well. Right? We have a tendency to judge ourselves more than other people will judge us. So you need to give yourself permission to fail. And you need to really 
be kind to yourself, you know, because failure is a really important part of the creative process. You know, we have the stigma about failure and and certainly in our country and sometimes around the world. And you need to understand that you learn so much more from failure than you would ever learn from success, right? You need to fail in order to learn. As long as you are reflecting on that failure and understanding what's going wrong, it's really just learning, right? So I often tell my students to fail big and to fail early, right? Because when you're starting to learn something, you're not expected to know it. So just put yourself out there and go all in, right? Make a big mess. That's fine. That's really what learning should look like. It should look like anarchy in the beginning. You're not going to be great. And maybe sometimes your skills are not at the level that you're comfortable with. And you you have these creative ideas, but you can't communicate them. But you need to change the way you see failure. And really, that mindset is so important. As an example, I got a book contract and um, I wanted to start writing. So I set up a little table in my house with a computer and, you know, everything I thought a writer might need. And I sat down and I started to try to write and I felt like crazy, right? It just didn't work for me. I I wasn't getting the pages done. And then all of a sudden I felt like this deadline was looming. So I had to just throw all of that out and find a way that worked for me. And that's something you learn as an artist is that regardless of what kind of work you're doing, you need to find the right process that works for you and how you really work best, right? So I found that it worked a lot better if I sat and, and wrote out in my car on my iPad. And because that's where inspiration came to me when I was doing other things. You know, when I take a shower or when I'm driving, I tend to feel more inspired. You know, sometimes you're inspired, but other times you just sit down and work. And it's all about work. And, and that's really how you get better. You know, work is kind of the secret to life. One of the mistakes I made early on with my book is thinking that there was a right way to do it. And that issue of knowledge comes into play a lot with creativity because a lot of people feel like they need to learn how to do something before they actually do it. What in truth is not knowing is a huge freedom, right? Once you learn how to do something, you've learned how other people have done it and naturally it's gonna be less creative. But if you don't know what you're doing, you have this huge creative freedom and you're gonna approach it with a much more unique perspective. That's really important. I believe every day is an opportunity to be creative. You need to take that doubt and fear and push it aside and take that creative risk and then go on a journey, see where it takes you. You know, one of the fun parts of being creative is that it reveals things that you wouldn't expect sometimes. You know, and the truth is, one of the reasons people say I'm not creative is that they associate it with art. And one of the realities is, is of course it's so much more than just art. Creativity could be in anything, right? I would say a a scientist like Albert Einstein is easily as creative as an artist like Pablo Picasso, you know? And and these two examples are both genius people. I mean, we're not all lucky to be so talented. It will come way easier to some people than others. But the truth is, and this is really important, is that when you take time to learn something, you have a better understanding of it, which is part of the reason I believe talent is actually overrated. So it's important to actually go through the process and give yourself time to learn and grow and reflect, you know, because reflection is actually where so much of the learning actually happens. So be kind, be creative, and change the world. Thank you.